Now, it has been almost eight years, Jeff, since we've seen our big tornado here in Kansas City, and hopefully it'll be a lot longer. Hopefully it never happens again. Now, you personally, you, have you ever seen a tornado? I've lived here for 40 years. I have never seen a tornado. Probably experienced 300 tornado warnings, sirens blowing 50 to 100 times. But, yeah, I've never seen a tornado. I've barely really even seen a wall cloud. So it shows you how rare they really are. Mm -hmm. A lot of you probably haven't seen one, and a few of you, I'm sure, have. Why do we have tornadoes in this part of the country or this part of the world, actually. As well, this is Tornado Alley, and we're in a unique spot in the world. We have the Gulf of Mexico to the south and Rocky Mountains to the west, and it mixes all the air together. That's right. Those two geographic boundaries are very important. As you can see, the air comes out of the Gulf of Mexico. It meets the air coming down slow from the Rocky Mountains along a dry line and storm systems that come out of the Rockies, and we are in a favorable spot that's called Tornado Alley. We also get what we call wind shear, where southerly winds will will veer around to westerly winds aloft, creating conditions like nowhere else in the world. And that's why we live in a spot that has more tornadoes than anywhere. You can say Tornado Alley extends all the way to Tennessee, but really the most tornadoes will be occurring out in the plains near Kansas City. Now, Jeff, tornado frequency, that can happen any time of the day or night. Any time of the day or night, any state in the union. But May and June have the most frequent tornadoes because that's when the Gulf of Mexico moisture and the jet stream is the strongest and the Gulf of Mexico moisture is the most plentiful and they overlap and that's when we have the most tornadoes and last year pretty much held up to that with 290 in May, 428 in June. Yeah, usually May is a little bit bigger than June. We'll see what happens this year, but May and June are our biggest months and sometimes in the fall you can see there's another peak there around October. Now my theory, the LRC basically is what happens. The pattern sets up in the fall, cycles through the winter and continues to this day in right on into summer. Here's one example of the LRC. October 26, we had a very big storm, the lowest surface pressure area ever recorded inland over the North American continent, and that was on October 26. Then we go out to 46 days later on December 11th, our first snow fell, another storm right on the cycle, 51 days later, remember the blizzard. All three of these storms right on the cycle, but Jeff, there are other storm systems as well. That's right, and there are storm systems also that can other produce severe weather, and that's why we picked out some dates that's and calendars, right. and we're in the middle of them right now. Based, based on the LRC, mm -hmm. we thought around April 3rd, April 4th would be the beginning of a very active period right through the middle of April, and then that storm we just showed will be coming back around May 8th to 14th. We're expecting a rather significant severe weather setup, and then watch out again May 22nd to June 1st, and then it should all come to an end this summer. Yeah, May 22nd is my birthday, so I'll remember that one. That's right. We <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope